Have you ever questioned why your prescription for physical therapy is requested for three times a week? Have you ever avoided physical therapy because you felt like your time or financial commitment couldn't meet those criteria? Is it even common to see a physical therapist three times a week in today's age? If you've asked yourself any of these questions or had any of these thoughts, I'm going to help answer those questions coming right up. It's Michael with Total Physical Therapy. If you have ever asked yourself whether or not you should be attending physical therapy three times a week, I'm going to help solve some of those questions for you. But to answer those, we're first going to have to take a trip down memory lane. Now, physical therapy is still relatively a new profession. It was only born and emerged out of the World War II era of the 1940s. So in this early exploration phase of physical therapy, there was an idea and this concept that more should be better. We didn't really have anything to say yes or no. So in these early phases, more the better, we saw positive results and so we just sustained and stuck with that, uh, with that frequency. But fast forward a couple eras and move into the next phase of physical therapy and what you found was that the science was now heavily uh, seeking answers to some of those prior beliefs. What emerged from that science? Well, in the era of evidence-based practice, the science actually proved that our initial beliefs were true. The more should be better concept was now proven by science. So in that next phase of therapy, the tradition continued and people, it was not uncommon for people to have physical therapy three times a week for multiple week, weeks on end. So as the science was emerging, it was confirming those earlier beliefs, there really wasn't a need to change things. Now, as we moved into the 2000 era, we continued to push the science, we refined our techniques, and we improved our outcomes tremendously. This happened at alarming rates. One of the industries that started to take note of these uh, changing dynamics of physical therapy was of payer sources. So the insurance industry began to focus heavily on our emerging research, and as a result of some of those studies and some of those findings, the insurance company started to close the windows and limit care for physical therapy, not because it was uh, unproven or unsuccessful, but in, indeed they were uh, picking studies that suggested that we could do more with less. So that brings us to a few questions. Has therapy and therapy techniques evolved since its origins? Well, absolutely it has. We've redefined and shaped the way that we approach healthcare, uh, specifically with movement science, in ways that are much more efficient than they were 70 years prior. Well, has the science changed around the frequency? Well, yes, but it hasn't changed the way that the payer sources would like us to believe. Now, it is true that we can achieve more with less, but that old traditional science still backs the fact that you truly need therapy more than what your uh, insurance company is usually willing to pay. Now, this brings up the idea and the concept of self-awareness and uh, self-motivation. And this has kind of been the, the more recent evolution of physical therapy. And that is the fact that we are driven and focused more on the education aspects of, of rendering our care than we are in the actual application and training. So those phases, uh, of application and training have condensed tremendously, uh, one, because our techniques have been refined and improved, and two, because we're kind of uh, uh, pushed that way with, with the majority of payer sources. So what does that mean to you, the consumer? Well, that means that you're being encouraged to take on uh, more of the responsibility and help learn the techniques and applications at a faster rate than you typically were in the past. And as a result of this, our goal is now to teach, grow your confidence, and watch you succeed. On the flip side of that coin, your goal is to listen, obtain, absorb, and improve. Let's give some real life examples. Now, let's take a common condition of an ACL repair. A majority of people out there would know that an ACL repair is not a quick process despite revolutionary changes in both surgical, surgical as well as rehabilitation techniques, 
we still don't allow participants to get back into sport play for a minimum of six months. So in this era, despite the fact that rehabilitation has improved dramatically, we still have that long extended six month window because of some of the surgical and, and anat anatomical and physiological changes that need to occur. But if we rewind history and we look at a typical ACL rehabilitative approach in the say the 90s, we'd find that it would be very common to have 30, 40 or more visits over the course of care for that ACL rehabilitation. But if we move into this era and this day and age, we're going to find that ACL rehabilitation is 40 to 50 percent less than that. That doesn't mean that uh, the consumer's effort has decreased. It means that your individual attention within a clinic and a facility, specifically with a therapist, is much less than it was 30, 40 years ago. Now, this isn't all bad. This is good for both. Uh, healthcare evolution as well as consumer involvement in the process. So if the profession of physical therapy is better, your goal as the consumer is to achieve more with fewer visits, then why does my script still say three times a week? Well, there's some common reasons for this. Number one, it's just not a habit. Referring providers oftentimes uh, are dealing with just incredible mass amounts of paperwork and it's very easy to fall into habitual patterns especially when it comes to writing out a prescription for physical therapy. Another reason is that it used to be mandatory for a frequency and duration to be written on a prescription for physical therapy which is no longer the case. Oftentimes it's the therapists that are indicating how long and how many visits need to be utilized. Some providers just simply don't know. So they decide to play it safe, and there's nothing wrong with this. Again, as I stated before, in this era, what is more common is for the physical therapist to actually recommend the frequency and duration. Now, the last theme I'll talk about is unfortunately the dark horse. Uh, this is the situation that we hate to see, but unfortunately we do see it. It is a reality, but we do bring it to light uh, just so you can be an informed, educated consumer. That dark horse is unfortunately the idea that you could be exposed to overutilization of therapy. This means that your referral source has prescribed uh, therapy in excess of, of what you truly need for your given condition, and they have done so in a, in a matter that might satisfy financial gain. So what's the bottom line with all of this? Is it common to receive physical therapy three times a week? Well, I would say absolutely not. If you're being seen that often, then I strongly encourage you to start asking questions and inquire about why you're being asked to receive physical therapy three times a week. Now, I hope this information sheds some light on why your prescription may say three times a week for physical therapy, but also what the reality of the situation is today. If you found this information useful, please share it with others around you Comment down below so we can answer any and all questions you might have regarding this topic. As always, have a great day. We'll talk to you guys soon.